Good morning, Peter. Thanks so much for joining us today on our Facebook Live. How are you doing today? I'm very well, Amy. Thank you very much for having me here. Very no, excited. No problem at all. Um, I have just a quick warning that I am on hotspot rather than Wi-Fi. Obviously, the wonderful world of tech um, and uh, the weather is somehow meaning that my Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy. So apologies in advance for everyone watching if I freeze. But the main we're mainly here to um, showcase PI and Peter's an awesome overview for us. So uh, that's fine by me. So if I freeze, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, but just apologies in advance if that happens. Um, let's, let's hope my uh, broadband holds out. <laughs> yeah, we're so reliant on it now. It's um, a little bit depressing, but um, hopefully all touch wood all goes well. But um, first of all, it'd be really cool for you to introduce yourself. Tell us um, a little bit about Pratt's Ignition, about your role within PI. Um, and then um, today, I believe we're going to go through some uh, of the new features, which would be really cool for us to share with our Clarity community as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, my name is Peter Marlowe and I work at um, Practice Ignition and I am one of the territory managers of Amir. So my role is really to educate any firms that are looking to streamline or improve their letter of engagement or proposal process, um, you know, one from a very manual process to, to a more streamlined digital one. And I'm there really to guide them through that process and uh, obviously for people that are are looking at practice ignition um so yeah and that involves you know overviews or, or you know sessions jumping on and, and just sort of figuring out what's uh, the best solution for them so yeah that is uh, that's my role at um at practice ignition Cool. And what's your what are you going to run through with us today? So obviously you've got some yeah today I'm not going to spoil it too much, but um, just want to cover off a few new features. So uh, today I'll be running through a little bit of an overview as to uh, what practice ignition proposals are all about and um, just show off a few of our, our features. Um, but it yeah. will be a shorter than normal overview, um, just focusing on the main features, but but they are very much fundamentals of, of what we're all about. So you'll get a good overview as well. Brilliant. Great. Well, um, over to you, really. Would you like me to share screens or are you? Yeah, I. if I can share my screen, then that would be great. Um, am I already sharing a screen? Uh, no, we are now. So we're in a bit of a matrix situation. Yeah, I'll come out of the infinity mirror um, and away I go. So thank you very much, Amy. So, yeah, um, practice ignition. So what we're all about. Um, so we are proposal to paid all in one place and probably thinking, yeah, but what does that actually mean, Peter? Um, so basically, we, as I've already said um, or, or led to, that we help firms take their letter of engagement process, which in most cases, a very manual one. Take it from that moment of dread when you come off of a client meeting um, and you have to jump into a, a manual template and follow a very manual process that can take up to an hour or more, by which time the client's got on with something else. And then when you finally get uh, an engagement letter or proposal over to them, they think, oh, God, I've got to read through this document now that's x amount of pages long so i'll put that to one side and invariably you end up chasing them and the whole process is very long-winded and it takes a lot of time and stress as well so we want to transform essentially what is this which is a manual process um to one that takes you literally minutes to produce uh, an engagement uh, a proposal um either at the end of the meeting or just after um so you can get through a to the client while they're still sort of engaged and their headspace is still in the meeting um within minutes but not only that but to actually provide them with something that's a little bit more visually engaging so um this is this is a digital proposal out of practice ignition and this would be you know from a link that the client would click on in an email. But the first thing they notice when they click on the link is how much this doesn't look like a manual document <laughs> that they've got to crawl through. And, and, you know, they've got to, uh, you know, 
they're put off by the uh, the amount of uh, work that's done that they need to put in. Um, it's very engaging. You you open up with a uh, with a introduction screen, and you know this uh, can embed video now. Now you might be thinking, Pete, you don't do video. Uh, what are you talking about? Um, but actually, you know, video. In, when you think about where we are in the world at the moment, not only with you know digital media things like Facebook. You've got, you know, Instagram, all these social media sites. Everything is visual. Everything is videos. But not only that, unfortunately, the position we're currently in with, with COVID, not being able to get out and see clients, actually a visual medium like video becomes so much more powerful and important. And especially in that first contact with the client. So for them to be able to... Hi there, and enough of that, to be able to click on a video and actually put a face to the trusted advisor, you know, and actually if you compare that to the four other um, Word document proposals that they might be getting elsewhere, it puts you in such a strong position with the competition as well. Also, it's super easy video. You can just pick up a Loom account. It's free. It's a Chrome add-on, but it might not be your thing. So you can, of course, at this point in the intro of your proposal, have a have a welcome uh, message in there as well. And it might be just supporting uh, the video, too. So I just move this out of the way. So the next page is your brochure. So, again, this adds to the video uh, to the visual. Sorry. Um, and it's actually something that we will create for every single one of our clients. So they will get their own brochure normally within the first week of signing up. And it is completely bespoke. We go by what's on your website or what you want to provide us as content. And the whole idea is that this is going to back up those conversations that you are having with your clients in those meetings. You know, they are able to educate themselves further on how you service the clients and maybe meet the team you know, go through uh, specific services as well and maybe explore options that, you know, you haven't necessarily discussed yet. Now, options takes me on nicely to one of our new features. So historically, you just are presenting a, a you know, proposal of services or one list of services that you've uh, spoken about. But this new feature, which is options, allows you to present multiple proposal options to the client so in this case you you know the client may have come to you thinking that they they wanted the essential accounting package but after that discovery meeting you realize or they realize you both realize that there's um you know there's room here for some advisory services for you to get more involved in the growth of their business so the growth accounting package is the more relevant uh, package to go with but you also want to tease them with the corporate accounts package. So, you know, they're looking at this thinking, oh, an extra £300 a month, we could have a full full CFO level uh, advisory service and we're paying a little bit less uh, yearly and quarterly. And, you know, you want to be teasing them with that. And, you know, hopefully now and again, they're going to be choosing that that higher option. So what they would do is select the option they want to go with, the next step is the service summary. So really important that you're breaking down the services away from the letter of engagement for your clients so that they fully understand what services are being proposed to them, the scope of those services um, from the outset so that they're, they're fully engaged and think, yep, this is exactly what we, we've spoken about. The next step is, right. How much does everything cost? So we're not just all about monthly reoccurring billing. Obviously, it is a very nice, stable revenue uh, source to have, you know, your monthly reoccurring. But, you know, this is accounting. There are, depending on the services, different ways that you're going to want to bill. So here I've got the uh, bill on acceptance option. So it might be some bookkeeping catch up, onboarding fee, etc. You've got your monthly, so your bookkeeping accountancy, your cloud software subscription, um, you know, management accounts in this particular example. And you can choose whether or not to break down the individual cost or just leave it as uh, the summary of the monthly total. But you've got here, you've got price to be confirmed. So this particular option I've got on my payroll instead of just having a flat fee, which you can also have 
I've chosen to present a per employee cost with a minimum pay run of £45. So again, that flexibility of presenting um, your costs how you want to present it and, and the best fit for your client. And um, we've also got some yearly service um, costs there uh, as well as quarterly as well with some operational planning there. So um, they're, they're the costs, very clear how much everything is, when they're going to be paying for each service, which leads to the penultimate step that they're used to within their consumer lives, which is adding their payment details. So we've got our own payment platform. It's a little bit like Stripe, and it allows you to actually collect your client's payment details within the proposal itself. So they would click in to add a new payment method. You can present, you can choose to present credit card option. A lot of clients like that, that, uh, you know, they love their Amex. They love using a, a business card. But the main one that people go for is that direct debit option. And actually being able to fill out the direct debit mandate within the proposal itself, rather than clicking on an external link, adds their payment details. And actually, because it is embedded, you can make it a required step. So you're saying, look, we're going to be delivering you these brilliant services, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client, um, but we're going to take payment as well. So you're going to need to put your payment details in before you can sign up. Now, obviously, if you're re-engaging a current client, you can choose to remove this payment option in its entirety, let alone removing, you know, the whether or not it's a required step. And then on to the last bit, which is that letter of engagement piece. There's no escaping it for, for the client. They have to read through uh, the terms and conditions. Um, now, they can view or download this as a PDF and view this later, read through it th thoroughly later. Um, but when they're happy, they tick the little box, type the name in, which is uh, a digital legally binding signature. And then maybe they won't accept. Maybe they will revert back and go with that corporate option. Um, the all singing, all dancing CFO before then signing up uh, to the proposal. So when they accept, they get a post acceptance screen. Um, now, again, you can have video here. It may just be you flaring your arms in the air saying, thank you very much for signing up. Uh, maybe you say, please ensure that you work through the next uh, steps below, clicking on all the links before we actually start work on your account. And this could be, you know, a link to, say, a digital online form for AML. So whatever your AML solution is, um, we can integrate that too. Um, now, this is also when a lot of automation a lot of workflow is going to be kicked off. So if you're using Xero, you're using QuickBooks uh, for your invoicing, then those clients will be automatically set up in there as well as any upfront invoices or monthly invoices. They will automatically be created in there too and sent out to the client. If you are using practice management software, so let's say Xero Practice Manager, you've got Center, Carbon, Pixie, um, anything that actually uses uh, Zapier integration and has a template, we can trigger workflow too. So the setup of jobs, tasks, and the clients themselves, etc. That's for another day, though. So you're probably thinking, Pete, that looks lovely. I don't believe you that it can take a couple of minutes. Well, challenge accepted. Um, let's jump into the platform and show you how this can actually be created in a matter of minutes. So here I am in my client account and I'm going to build out a new proposal. Let's just refresh the screen quickly. So let's build a new proposal. Now I could start from scratch you know, down the bottom here, but I am on the clock, people. So what I'm going to do is utilize one of my lovely templates down the side. And these are bespoke to me, you know. Um, I've set these up once, saved them as a template, and now going forwards for all my different types of proposals, instead of starting from scratch, I can actually just select the relevant template to the proposal I want to send out. So the challenge is to create that three package template. So I'm going to start off with that, with that one. Let's hope that this isn't my screen freezing. Nope, we're all good. 
And then, uh, and then it's just a case of running through these steps along the top. So here I've got some more some, my general settings. So selecting my client, if you're linked into Zero or QuickBooks, then you can draw through client um, accounts through there. You just type the name in and then draw it through. Um, I'm going to use my trusted client here. I've got some uh, effective start date options. So it could be on acceptance. It could be on a specific date. So uh, it doesn't necessarily need to, uh, to be starting straight away and a minimum contract length. So um, some firms, they re-engage and it's a hard re-engagement each year. So the contract only lasts for a year, but some or most are open-ended agreements, but you can still utilize this um, this sort of end date, as it were, hiding it from the proposal, but using it as a review date. It makes those uh, client service reviews a lot easier to actually manage on a regular basis. So coming from general into services, I just want to hide that top piece for now uh, for the big reveal in a minute. So here, because I'm using the template, I've already got all of my services all lined up. So I've got my onboarding um already set up now you know you don't you can lower the cost of that if they already know it, zero inside out they're not going to take much on board in you could delete it in, in its entirety you could you know whack the price up because they're going to be a complete pain to actually on board um you know you can edit any part of these options and these options are just pulling in from your own library so again your library is something that we will work with you to customize to yourself um, for your letters of engagement templates and your service options as well which will feed into as the building blocks for these templates um, now you've got massive flexibility as you've already seen, it's not just about monthly reoccurring. You can actually do whatever you want with your services in the way of billing. If I jump into uh, my billing rules, um, I could make it at one time because it's going to be up front, but it could be recurring. If it's recurring, it doesn't need to just be monthly. It could be weekly. It could be every four or every three months, so quarterly, six months, yearly. Whatever you want to bill for a specific service, you've got that flexibility there as well. So coming back, just working down here, you saw what uh, well, you saw previously. I've got payroll on my monthly options. I've got the option not only to have a fixed fee, but variable units. Well, what's that all about? Um, you know, is that does that mean that I can actually bill uh, on different sorts of units depending on the service? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, employees, number of employees for payroll services. Maybe you are still doing services that have an, a day rate or an hourly rate. Maybe it's bookkeeping based on transactions. Um, whatever it is, you've got the flexibility there to present that and bill that to your client in the way that you want to, in the way that it fits. Um, here I've got build every year. I've got, yeah, build every year. I think on another one, I've got a quarterly option. So already in here, save me loads of time. Um, and it's just about tweaking certain prices, you know, for your bookkeeping might be low transaction, but they might be 8 million turnover. So it's going to be more than 220. So maybe a 520 for their bookkeeping because they're going to expect more from you. Now, up to the top, this is where the options bit comes into play. So when I built this out initially, when I did my essentials package, I just duplicated this. It won't allow me to do this because I've already got my three options, but I duplicate that and then build out my growth package. Again, working through changing the different variations of services. And then I duplicated this and built out my corporate package and then starred the recommended package, which is the middle one. Did it once, saved it as a template, and then moved on with my life. So the next time round, it takes me literally minutes. Moving on to payments, I've got preset all my payments options turned on, but you can preset it whatever you want. And you can, you've got full flexibility over what you provide on an individual proposal. So I'm just going to put everything on. On to terms, selecting again from your library, uh, which letter of engagement template. And the way that we set up our letters of engagement is to be completely automated. 
you will never have to work through and manually fill out a letter of engagement again. We use things called placeholders, which draw in relevant information from the client record and places it into the relevant places in the letter of engagement. We also split out service terms as well against the actual service options and then feed those back into the relevant areas. So what you end up with is selecting your template, selecting your services, and then on to the next step, saving a bucket of time. Then automation, that's a whole different, uh, a whole different overview. Uh, so I'm going to go straight on to presentation, but automation, obviously, uh, what you're going to trigger into practice management software, into invoices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, presentation, so adding that video in, that video option, your welcome message, you've got your brochure, which you can have as an embedded option, or you could swap that out maybe for a slight variation a few other options here do i want to break down each individual cost i'll leave that on for now the post acceptance screen have the video in there and the content and then also now you know sending this out to the client what email template do i want to use to send this out to the client on and then any additional people that might need this proposal to to view over it and sign and that is about it. And without a running commentary, you can see that actually to get to this point where you're sending it out to the client can take you literally minutes. So I'm not going to email this to myself, but I want to prove that, you know, I wasn't just making this up. <laughs> so if I, uh, if I now click on that link, which you would receive in the email, you can see that I've created pretty much what I showed you at the beginning. Now, that's not where it ends with our uh, with our new features because we've got and i've already mentioned it a client billing schedule so the whole idea of this because we're not just a static one-time trigger some automation um you know proposals we are a live um you know we are a live billing schedule essentially so any any um any sort of additions um, that you make to the agreement will trigger off automatic workflow. So the billing schedule will be updated and, you know, invoices will be created automatically off the back of that. So if we jump into the actual billing schedule, um, each individual service on that proposal has now been split into a manually build or an automatically build. So for, in this example, my payroll, I've got all of my monthly payroll here to jump in and confirm the amount of staff that I'm doing before pushing that through to be invoiced. Um, it could be any service that you're billing on completion and you would just jump in, you can schedule this for a specific bill date, probably the same date as the as the invoices that are already going out. And if, if that is the case, it will slot it into that existing invoice so that you're not sending out multiple ones. You can put a description line in here, quantity, price, discount, and then you just confirm, and that will move that into the automatically build column. Now, this you can see, this is all my monthly pay runs for ever and a day for this client. Um, but let's say a client phones you up and says, you know, can we add something in for, you know, they ask you something you want to charge a little bit extra for and you can put it under bookkeeping or whatever service for this specific month. Let's say they um, they phone up and they had, they're going through a bit of a tough time. So they say, can we put the virtual CFO uh, reporting and advisory service on hold for a few months just to, free up our cash flow you can come in put that down to zero um you know go through and review any other services for these specific months and then you know save that and it might just be can you just give us a couple of weeks with regards to the invoicing yeah of course move that on make the changes it gives you that flexibility when a client phones up to come in here have this as your one source of truth and do what needs to be done straight away and then you can get on with those more, well, the actual sort of work that you're doing for the client. Um, now, let's say you've got ad hoc work. You know, you can, you know, client phones up. Can you do me a forecast? Yeah, we can do your forecast. Oh, can you um, 
can you send it through for um, verification? We've got, we've got to get it paid through um, our sort of accounts payable team. Yes, of course. So you come back, you make the changes on your, um, your, on your agreement. Uh, you can accept on their behalf because you don't need a new signature because it's going to be go to their accounts payable anyway for review. You come back into your billing schedule and let's say that this is the job that you're going to be sending through manually. So I'm going to be, actually, we're going to invoice this now. Um, let's just put this to a meaningful amount. Maybe you put a reference name in there and maybe they got a, uh, a code for accounts payable that you can put in there as well. Um, but we're not going to use the... Uh, the, the general sort of um, direct debit information, we're going to send it through as a manual request for payment. So I'm going to send that through, send the invoice. If I now go to my emails, an apology for my inbox, it's going to look terrible. Um, here we go. That's not it. Come on. This is where broadband speeds need to be uh, a little bit more reliable. <laughs> Come on. It was going so well. Let's resend that. Let's do this one. It's an invoice now, manual, 500 pounds. You confirm. Gonna put a little message in there. Please pay this invoice, please now. Send that through, and hopefully at least one of those have come through by now, which it isn't. Essentially, what comes through is an email uh, where the client can pay for that invoice straight away. Um, so they bring up. They can pay by different means and then they can also, um, you know, make those payment details, the the details going forward. So if you are struggling to get people to get onto direct debit, what this can, what this acts as is like a nice, happy medium where you can push through payment, um, mm -hmm. not like the example, and, you know, get that payment done. Um, and that is about it. I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger there. Um, yep. I could take you through uh, a lot more stuff, but that is sort of our, our sort of features, our new features um, to the product. So if you wanted to obviously find out everything about practice ignition in its entirety, then by all means, head over to our website. Um, where you can start a free trial or if you know you haven't got time at the moment to work through a free trial you can book in a 45 minute overview to go through with us uh, a bespoke overview and talk through all the features um, if you want to contact me directly uh, my email address is peter.marlow at practiceignition.com so thank you very much i hope that was all right amy it was brilliant. Thank you for sharing, um, uh, particularly on new features. It's been really cool to see. Um, we've been talking to the Clarity community a lot at the moment. Obviously, you mentioned at the beginning about videos, and it's really cool that you can pull in videos and, and imagery, especially in these unprecedented times that we're in at the moment with, you know, face-to-face -face contact being um, a minimum, at a, at a minimum. And I think the power of video is really um is, is really powerful uh, to get, you know, build that relationship with your client. And it's awesome to be able to get that straight from the beginning with them, um, with your proposals uh, as well. And we encourage our community to send out videos. Um, as you said, it's super easy to do with Loom um, and, and build your confidence and, uh, and, and do, and it doesn't have to be a Hollywood performance, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. but it's nice to get that kind of face to face uh, um, relationship almost through a screen. Uh, so that's really cool as well. And also, I love the new feature of the options. We have been talking in our workshop groups. Uh, we run a um, series of workshops for our Clarity community. Members and non-members can join in and get a kind of four-day, um, a, a four-part series uh, workshop working through Clarity and scaling and scaling 
uh, business advisory and introducing business advisory. But part of that is um, about uh, how you package and price advisory um, easily and uh, sc uh, uh, to scale, uh, which is how, which is really cool. And also one of the conversations that's been coming up recently, uh, which you, which is really cool with your options is never make assumptions with your clients. So one yeah. of our um, mem uh, graduates from the workshop series was talking about how he was um, talking to a client and thought he was going to go in with the, you know, essentials package or basic package or whatever you want to call it. Um, and actually the client ended up upselling themselves up into the pro version because they saw the other ones. Um, as well. And that's awesome that you guys have, you can show that with the teasers with your, with your options section as well for new features. Um, yeah. So just reinforces never make assumptions with your clients because you know you don't know they don't know what they don't know <laughs> um and so it's um you know especially when it comes to business advisory as well um and, and building that in for your firm you know you don't know what they're thinking and you and sometimes there's no such thing as too much communication at the moment so it's really cool that you can make it so personable through practice ignition uh, yeah for, for that it takes away the hard sell and you can start not playing mind games, but let's say they do come to you and the conversation is about one thing where you can send through two options and say, well, I recommend what we're talking about. And then they think, well, what's this other option over here? And why aren't you recommending this to me? And look, there's this all singing, all dancing um, virtual CFO package where you can help me grow my business. And it allows them to read through uh, that option and sort of weigh it up in their own time and make their own decision takes away the hard sell from you to us from a certain um, aspect as well. But yeah, it's just about giving the flexibility to your clients, backing up those conversations that you're having and video as well. Like I get it. You know, I, I was uncomfortable with video at a certain point, but you know what? I realized how much I hate writing long emails and <laughs> how much my clients hate reading them. Yeah. And uh, what they do is they, they come back to me and says, I love the little videos you always send me because it feels like I'm getting to know you uh, a little bit more on the video. And it's just easy to, to click on a video and watch it. So, yeah, you do have to get past the hang up of hating seeing yourself on a video. Um, yeah. It does become really easy and a massively powerful tool at the moment with everything that's going on. Uh, yes, agreed. I uh, never work with live tech and live animals, and I seem to be working with both. Um, so, right. <laughs> so, so many run throughs of uh, that payment option. It was <laughs> untrue. And then obviously, live, my Google account so decided it didn't like me. So, uh, so yeah. No problem. Well, um, I think we can wrap that up now. But thank you so much for sharing um, this overview. Um, and um, we will uh, we'll be sharing this with the Clarity community and we're really looking forward to working with you guys again. Thank so, you very much. Cheers, Pete. Thanks so much. Thanks, Amy. Take care. Thanks, everyone.